Shalom. All right. <laughs> I realized I had to go ahead and make this video because I had a lot of stuff going on in my life and I almost forgot. <laughs> but this is the next. Um, a lot of movement going on. I'm sorry. This. <laughs> This is the next Recognizing Wolves video, and this one is called Only Befriend Those Who Benefits Them. And I only have two scriptures. Um, I'm sure if I were to really dive in to the scriptures, I would find way more than two. But it's only two that Ruach HaKodesh told me to use. So, glory to Yah. <laughs> glory to Yah. So I guess I put, I put this over here. I don't think I need any of this. All right. Glory to his name. All right. So recognizing <laughs> wolves. This is video four in the series. So that means we still have two more. Do I have two more? This is a piece of paper. I think I have more than two. I think I have three more. Yep. I have three more. So got three more after this. Yo. All right, so in the first video we talked about um, one of the ways you recognize wolves is by their fruit. A bad tree can't produce good fruit, where and a good tree can't produce good fruit. So that video is called "Bad Tree, Bad Fruit." You can find that in the list. Um, the next one was talking about um, having a seer conscious. It's called um, "Carnal Minds with um, No Conviction." And then the third video was talking about how they twist scripture. And I don't know if I mentioned this in, because I use um, Habakkuk uh, chapter two when I talked about that. But you know, also another good one for the twist in scripture is my favorite <laughs> scripture, go to scripture I always use, Matiyahu 4 verses 1 through 11, because that's where Hashatan actually takes scripture and twists it. Hello? Thought I heard something. That's where Hashitana actually takes scripture and twists it. Hold on one second. I promise you I could have heard somebody say something. Anyway. <laughs> so this one, again, oh, I just lost my... Well, place mark, huh? This one again is called Only Befriends Those Who Benefit Them. So the, I'm just going to dive right in. So in this scripture, this is Luke 7 verses 36 to 50. This is actually when Yeshua goes and he is invited, well, he's invited to dinner um, at a Pharisee's house. Now, back during, matter of fact, you can say during these times too, but especially during biblical times, when you supped is what they call it. When you came, when you broke bread with someone, when you fellowshiped with them through um, the breaking of bread, it was considered a very intimate thing. Okay. So it was a very important thing. So you have this Pharisee that invited Yeshua, who is literally making all this, well, he's not making this ruckus, but word about him is starting to cause some problems <laughs> for the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes um, because he's, you know, healing people, casting out demons, so on and so forth. So this Pharisee takes it upon himself to invite Yeshua back to his house. Now it sounds all willy-nilly and whatnot, but let's listen to how this snake finally reared its ugly head in the scripture. You see his true motives as to why he brought brought him out. I mean, brought him, invited him to dinner. Okay, so this is Luke 7, verses 36 to 50. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Yeshua sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet, behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil now when the pharisee this is where you see his true motives start to come out now okay because these snakes they, i mean these wolves they can't keep their mask up for too long okay 
Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, wait, wait, <laughs> he spoke to himself. So he wasn't even bold enough to say this out loud. Okay. Anyway, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner. And Yeshua answered and said to him, Simon, I have nothing. I mean, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. Wait, let's go back. Because up until this point, Luke had um, addressed the Pharisee as Pharisee. But you see that there is a level of intimacy as far as a relation uh, between Yeshua and the Pharisee. Because he called him by his first name. He's, we didn't know his name was Simon. Yeshua called him Simon. Okay, so this is what Yeshua says to him. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when, they had and when they had nothing with which to prepay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he, being Yeshua, said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he, Yeshua again, turned to the woman and said to Simon, Wow. <laughs> he turned to the woman and this have you ever ever heard somebody <laughs> not look at you but they speaking to you? Rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Then Yeshua turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So first, let's back up to how Yeshua addressed Simon the Pharisee. So back then it was custom when you invited someone over to fellowship with you through the breaking of bread, it was custom for you to wash their feet, anoint their head with oil, and you greet each other with a kiss on the cheek. That's the reason why when um, Judas betrayed Yeshua, he kissed them. Well, it was also customary to for the student to kiss the teacher, the rabbi on the cheek too. It was a greeting. But that's why Judas kissed um Yeshua on the cheek when he brought the Sanhedrin with him and was like, yo, this is the dude that, you know, that she was looking for. This is the savior you were looking for. <laughs> Sorry, I've been in a goofy mood all day. So, um, and we're going to get to that one next. But yeah, so he's like, you worried about what she got going on, but you're not even doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? But think about this. The only reason why the Pharisee even, um, befriended him in the first place is because he wanted to try to make himself look better because think about it this way there's two sides of the coin and this is just me speculating now because none of this is in the scripture but there's two sides to how this could have gone either he would have became more popular because he was sitting with the man that was bringing true freedom to the oppressed jewish people or he could have been the Pharisee. He could have became famous by being the Pharisee that finally put to rest this man who was making a mockery of the religious leaders. So no matter which way you flip the coin, he could have came out on top. If he didn't realize that he was going up against Yahu in the flesh. Yeah, the word Yahu in the flesh. So, yeah. So he's basically trying to call this woman out. He's trying to trap Yeshua like many of them were trying to do. And, he, and Yeshua was just like, but you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You were supposed to, you're not showing me common hospitality. You invited me to dinner and you ain't done none of this stuff because his motives weren't right. Mm. He was only friends with him for it to benefit him. So I brought up Judas. Let's go ahead and go to that uh, scripture. So this is going to be, um, the first part is going to be Mark 14, verses 10 to 11. And then we're going to skip down in the same chapter to verses 43 to 50. Okay, so starting at, <laughs> was it Mark 14? Yeah. 
So let's go all the way back. Okay, Mark 14, starting at verse 10 says, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray him to them. Now remember, let's go back. Then Judas, one of the twelve, that's the twelve disciples. So this is one of the twelve that's walking closest. This, this is one of Yeshua's homeboys. This is one of his homeboys. It's not just one of these random folks that he was out there healing and teaching and feeding fish and bread and all the other stuff too. This is one of the ones that was walking with him. Okay, this is one of his homies. His homeboy <laughs> who knew he had a hit out on his head. You know what I'm saying? Judas knew Yeshua had a hit out on his head and he still he went to the very people that was looking for him. Mm. Went to the chief priests to betray them, um, to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So we saw how he might conveniently betray him. He was a snitch. <laughs> he sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver, pretty much. Because you remember how he wound up. You know what I'm saying? He fell headlong and his insides bust out. You know what I'm saying? He, he killed himself after they crucified Yeshua because... He realized what he had done, but he basically he sold his soul for thirty pieces of silver. So he was only friends. That shows you right there. He was only friends with Yeshua for his own benefit. He benefited monetarily. As a matter of fact, prior to him gaining that mon that money, he benefited off of the just by proxy from him being friends with Yeshua until he realized because at first. Yeshua had all this popularity, but then when that hit got put out, he was like, whoa, mm, let me get some money off of this. You know what I'm saying? Because So at first, he was benefiting off of the, pop the popularity of Yeshua. Then he benefited off of the hit on his head. 30 pieces of silver. Jump down to 43, verse 43. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, He's making sure they letting you know this is his homeboy with a great multitude. So he didn't just bring like a few police officers. Like he came with a whole lot of people. Like, yo, this the dude you was looking for. This is the savior you were looking for. <laughs> with a great multitude with swords and clubs. He came with a mob, yo. He came with a whole lynch mob, pretty much. Like he came with a lynch mob. Slimy <laughs> came um, came from the chief priests and scribes and elders. Now this betrayer, now he don't even have a name, had given them a signal. Like he went from being Judas to being his betrayer. Mm. Had given them a signal saying, "Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely." So remember what I said about the kiss. That's how they greeted each other. That's how a student. That's how a, uh, the Talmudin would greet their rabbi their teacher so the disciple or the student would greet their teacher by with a kiss on the cheek as soon as he had come immediately he went up to him and said to him rabbi rabbi and kissed him remember i said that's how they greet their teachers then they laid which is another reason why um never mind then they laid their hands on him and took him and one of those who stood by drew a sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Malchus is actually the name of the guy whose ear got cut off. Then Jesus, I'm sorry, then Yeshua answered and said to, him, to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? So he's like, yo, like, I'm not even resisting arrest. Sound familiar? This been going on since it's been going on since it's been going on. So all these... Um, Police brutality against black crimes. That stuff been going on. And yes, I said that because I'm sorry. I love all of my clear folks. But let's just get this straight. Yeshua was not white. <laughs> he was a man of color. So this police brutality been going on since it's been going on since it's been going on since it's been going on. Just saying. Um... I was daily with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then they all forsook him and fled. Now remember, he basically was like, yo, I've been in these. Uh, he said, I've been in the temple teaching and you didn't you didn't seize me. Remember, and we all throughout scripture prior to him being arrested, 
you see instances where they sought to kill him, they sought to arrest him, they sought to do all this stuff, but it wasn't his time. So they weren't able to. So that's what he's talking about. But these are two examples. You got the Pharisee that knew his heart wasn't right. That's that's the reason why when he brought Jesus uh, Yeshua to his house, he didn't do none of the common hospitality practices with him because inwardly, he was a ravenous wolf. He was a sheep in wolf. I mean, he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was pretending to be his friend, but he really wasn't. It was his motives. And and go watch the video. Motives matter. Well, the picture says motives matter. But the video is called, What is Your Motive? Because <laughs> all of this is tying in together. Like, you gotta, this is all supposed to be increasing your discernment. Because we just be going through and somebody sound good, they look nice, they got a huge following. So a lot of folks jumping on bandwagons, not knowing that, that bandwagon is heading straight for the lake of fire. Like, I think you need to know. You need to ask some questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be jumping on bandwagons, yo. All right, so that is this video. And it was short. I think I'm getting better at this. Yay. I'm not going to torture you guys with hour long videos, at least for right now. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> All right, y'all. So this was the fourth video. Um, I look forward to the last three and of course there'll be videos in between please by any means necessary um go ahead and look up i'm sorry <laughs> go ahead and, and click the description so you can find the links to the newsletter i have an um the seventh newsletter should be out march 1st should be out march 1st Let's pray about that one. <laughs> I also have, um, you could also use that link to get to my blog. That's all on my Listen Up new, uh, well, my Listen Up website. And you can also gain access through the affili affiliates page on that same website to my free book that is called um, Becoming the Bride of Christ. That is um, a PDF that you can download and you can read. And I have a new project that I'm working on. I ain't gonna tell you about it right now, but I am so super excited because when it gets done, it's gonna benefit everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, you have a, a wonderfully blessed rest of your day, night, whenever it is you're watching this. And just remember, I love you, but Yash, Yahuwah loves you more. Shalom.